Absolutely. All right, so we are going to get started right away because like I said, I have a full content filled presentation for you. Just for those of you that don't know me, which I see quite a few people that I'm not familiar with. Um, my name is Deborah Darris. I'm working with the South Bay Small Business Development Center in conjunction with the Beverly Hills Chamber of Commerce, of course. And this is a service that's provided through the SBA and through the city of Beverly Hills. Who am I? I am an international speaker, or I was before COVID. All of my speaking engagements, if any of you can relate to um, losing contracts or revenue during the time of COVID, I had a gig to Monaco, Medellin, Colombia, and Umbria, Italy that all got canceled, but I'm still calling myself an international speaker. We will return, and I know that will come back. I have over a decade as a digital marketing consultant. I pride myself on being the in-house social media goddess for the Beverly Hills Chamber of Commerce, so I am here to serve you. Um, one of the things that I do is webinars, seminars, trainings, but the other thing that I provide for you is one-on-one -on -one consultation. So if after this presentation you're like, whoa, Deborah, that was a lot of information, where do I start? Can you walk me through? Can you help me with specific information for my Beverly Hills business or my small business? The answer is yes. Through the SBDC, the link that Blair put in the chat, thank you Blair, is the link that you're going to be able to click to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me and you'll be able to have that through Zoom or phone. Okay, my whole intention of this webinar, I've been putting a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. I've done this many times before, but I customized it just for you, Beverly Hills, um, because I really care that you're not wasting your time on social media, that you're saving your energy, and the most important thing is that it's generating revenue. I don't want you to spend any time on any platform that's not going to be income producing. So every PowerPoint slide is going to be how to make money through Instagram. So here are the objectives that I'm going to cover today in the next 75 minutes. Um, why do you post on Instagram for business and also how? Because there is a difference between Instagram for fun, which is like selfies and all about you, and how to post for business strategically. So I am going to go over what is the Instagram platform. Many of you are already familiar with it, but how is it unique and how you can position your brand so that you are going to be inviting, not just followers, because we don't care about followers as business owners. We care about potential customers, clients, people that are going to buy from us. We're we're not on Instagram for popularity. We're on Instagram for sales. So I'm going to help you strategically to set up your profile because most of you have a profile, which is basically your description, but is it leading to sales? And that's, I'm going to give you just samples and really steps that you can take and little tweaks that can increase your sales right away. I'm also going to share with you how to organically, when I say the word organically, that means without paying for ads, okay? We like that. Not spending money and making money is always great. So organically means naturally, right? So how to get your followers to become your customers and also how to get these followers to become your brand ambassadors, to love your product, to love your service and to want to post about it, give you rave reviews and then you get that social proof because people don't believe what you say, they believe what your client or customer says about your product or service. So that social proof as we call it in digital marketing is so important, okay? So I'm going to help you to turn followers to sales and how to set up your visual image. Have you ever been to a store and it was such a mess you couldn't even shop? Well, the same is true with Instagram. We need to set up a clean, cohesive account that is on brand, that is on messaging, and that is on purpose with educating people to the pain or problem we solve for them. I'm going to get really into that, okay? I'm also going to help you to set up your content so that it's easy to sell. Did you know you could put, those of you that have tangible products, you could have viable links right in your Instagram feed. 
right? So that is a possibility. And I'm going to give you a lot of resources that's going to help you use the Instagram app so that it's easier to post, easier to schedule, and that it converts. Convert means purchases, <laughs> okay? Because the whole purpose of this is educating them, making them aware of what you do, but then also converting them to be your loyal customers. So why do we post on Instagram? One of the reasons that we post on Instagram, especially as a restaurant or a retailer, or if you sell a product or a service, is because if you don't already know, Facebook is pay to play. You know that, right? So if you're posting anything on Facebook and it's on a business page and you're not paying for ads, you're not going to see the engagement that you will see naturally, organically through Instagram. And because Facebook and Instagram are owned by the same company, Zuckerberg, right? It is growing exponentially, right? It has over 1 billion users a month. And by the way, these statistics were from first quarter, January through March. Since the quarantine, the numbers have gone up at least by double. So these numbers are being very, very conservative. Why? Because people are stressed out by watching television. And so what do they do to distract themselves? They go to social media. And Instagram is a lot less intense than Facebook because it's visually driven. And did you know that people, 500 million of them, watch Instagram stories every day? Do you know what I mean by stories? So when you're on Instagram, there's a circle that is around your profile. And that these stories are the behind the scenes. They're what's new in your business, what's happening within the last 24 hours, because it, it's kind of like your 11 o'clock news, right? Your stories. And guess what? Every time you post a story, it sends, it has the potential, if you use stories, right, to send traffic because if you, to your feed. So if you put a sticker, that says stay home, then you could be in the stay home feed. If you put Beverly Hills, then people that are searching by location could find you through your stories. So stories, 500 million views a day. And you know why it's even higher than that? Is because before people were at their office, they were at a workplace. They couldn't look on Instagram when they're, but guess what now? their home <laughs> and they're taking their phone connected to their hand to the kitchen to the living room and if your business is on there they may discover you and guess what want to purchase from you why because you are solving the pain or problem that they have right and how are you going to do this on instagram so you are going to create and i'm going to show you in in coming up slides you're going to create a visual portfolio where people can see what pain or problem you solve for them and how they can buy from you with ease and grace, okay? You wanna make it as easy as possible for them to buy. And like I said before, if you're selling tangible products, you're able to have that little briefcase icon in the feed where people can purchase right from your Instagram. So those of you, and I'm sure maybe some of you don't have a website. If you don't have a website, you could literally use Instagram as a beginner platform for your website until you have one. Did you know that? Yes, you can, because you could literally sell your products right from the feed. And if you don't have a product and you have a service, I'm going to give you ways to sell that too. All right. So what is Instagram? Anybody recognize Beverly Hills Chamber member? Dr. Sheila Nazarian at Dr. Sheila Nazarian at the Skin Spot. She has about five different Instagrams. I met her through the Beverly Hills Chamber. And I want you to see an example of what is Instagram. You may not think of it like this because you may be thinking of Instagram for fun, but Instagram for business is literally your online store display. This is letting your potential customers, clients, shoppers know what is the problem you solve. So when you're looking at this, what is it solving for us, right? It's, this avocado is talking about how they use natural products in her skincare line. This is keys to even skin tone, right? Because we got little dots on our face, whatever, from too much walking outside. And then 
a special offer, which is a call to action using the code stay well, so appropriate and relevant, giving the times that we're in. So Instagram allows you to showcase your products and services in a visual way. Keyword, visual. And this is probably why for someone like me who's not that creative, I'm not that visual, I'm more auditory. So I've been using more YouTube, I've been using more Facebook Live because that's like an auditory thing for me, it's easier podcasting. But Instagram, especially if you have a restaurant, especially if you have a jewelry line, especially if you have a skincare line, but even if you're a yoga teacher, I'm gonna show you a yoga teacher or an insurance agent example in this PowerPoint. It's a way that you can display how you solve your ideal targets pain or problem okay that's who we care about on Instagram we don't care about people that are just going to be looky-loos or people that are not our target market we care about attracting those people that have the pain or problem that we solve okay so how is Instagram unique <laughs> how is it unlike all other platforms well one of the things that makes Instagram unique because it's a visual platform, it requires that you have higher level and higher quality photos. Why? Because this is essentially like a portfolio, right? So when people are looking at your last six images, they're getting a snapshot of what you do. It's kind of like, like let's say Tiffany's Beverly Hills. If they were to have a picture, in a magazine, it would be crystal clear, right? It would never be blurry. And the same thing here. This is your magazine. This is your opportunity to showcase the best of the best of your product and service, right? And say, you know, you have a service and it's not like a product like skincare. You could get photos taken of you, professional photos. It doesn't have to be all the time, but once in a while. Or you could use professional um, Adobe stock images uh, photos. I pay $30 a month and I get 10 professional images that I can use in my Instagram, right? So I don't have to create, do photo shoots all the time. But you definitely wanna have high quality photos and don't stress out and think, oh my God, I have to buy a camera for Instagram. No, you don't, you know why? Because you have a camera, you have your iPhone 11, right? Or whatever phone you have, your smartphone is pretty great, I have to tell you. So I'm not saying you have to buy a professional camera or necessarily have professional photographs. However, influencers, almost every influencer I know, Koya Webb, Dr. Sheila Nazarian, they do have professional photographers. But our goal is not to be an influencer. Their goal is, but our goal is to connect with their ideal target market, with the ideal customer that has the pain or problem we solve, okay? So don't worry so much about the pictures being, you know, by a photographer, but they do need to be high quality. So no blurry pictures, um, and the pictures need to stay on brand with the colors of your brand. So if you have your logo and it's yellow, blue, and white, you wanna stick to that color theme, right? At least for six squares. Because for the most part, people aren't gonna scroll back to the very beginning. They're just gonna look, because people on social media aren't looking, they're glancing and scrolling. So you want them to be able to look at the last six posts you have, your portfolio, and to know exactly what it is you do. You don't wanna confuse them by having food and then having your kid and then having something else. I was coaching someone that is an acupuncturist yesterday and she would have like this pumpkin and then she would have this other thing and then she would have her baby and it, it wasn't clear what she was selling. So it's really important at a glance, as the viewer, we should be able to know, oh, this Koya girl, even I didn't show you her bio, you know what she does, right? Yoga, right? She's a vegan chef and she teaches people healthy lifestyle. You can get that energy from her post. And one other thing that's so important is to stay on brand with your messaging. I'm one with the universal. So she's, you know, as a yoga teacher, very metaphysical and spiritual. So she stays on brand with her message. She would never have a post that was controversial or political, right? She stays on brand. So you want to stand brand. So you want to really be clear about the message that your brand represents and educate people on that in your feed, okay?
So the other thing that's so important, and I'm going to give you an app. I'm going to give you a lot of apps that are going to make your life easier so you don't have to think because we're so busy as business owners. How are we supposed to be digital marketers at the same time, right? We're busy. But if I give you these apps, you set it up once and then you don't have to do it again. So you want to align your visual image, with, whether it's pink and brown and gold like hers, and then keep it. So I'm going to give you an app that's going to give you a color palette, your font, and then you're just going to change it each week when you post. And you're not going to have to post every day. Good news. Remember, I promised you it would save you time, energy, and money. And you can do that by setting up your post for the week, two or three posts in a week um, using a platform. Okay. What are your goals for Instagram? With any sort of a social media marketing strategy, we need to have a plan, right? We need to have a really clear strategy. So the first thing that you want people to do is to like, trust, and respect you so that you will, they will buy from you. How are they going to like, trust, and respect you? Number one, you need to educate them of what you sell. Oh, like for example, maybe you sell services to support people going through a divorce, or maybe you offer services to help people with healthy living, or maybe you have services to help people that are small business owners that want to get capital, right? I coached a client the other day that was doing that. And the next thing that you want to do is have them to be aware. This is brand awareness of what are the values of your brand? What is your unique selling proposition? What is it that you do that is unlike other people that help people through divorce? So when you think of your Instagram and you think of your feed, I'm going to go back for a second, these six squares, I want you to imagine what are the three adjectives that would describe your brand, right? Mine is um, transformation. I transform your business. Um, it is also inspiration to take action. Um, and it's also motivation so that you feel that you can do it, right? So what is the feeling? Because people buy not based on rational thought. They buy based on emotion. So you want the pictures, the posts that you have, stories, IG Live, IGTV, those are all different neighborhoods in Instagram, to really convey your brand messaging. You also, one of your other goals is to have a call to action. Because here's the bottom line. Instagram is not where you want your followers to stay. You want to meet them on Instagram, but get them where? To your website, to your email list, right? Or to your, maybe you want to get them on your phone so that you could close that sale. So you definitely want to have calls to action, right? So DM means direct message. On Instagram, they have an inbox. That's all you need, right? Another inbox. You, but you do need it because it makes sales. I have someone that DM'd me and they wanted to hire me for coaching because they were watching my Instagram and they saw that I had a podcast and they saw that I had a YouTube channel and they saw that I was doing all of these different webinars and I was like, oh, can you coach me? right? So definitely you can get clients and customers through those messaging systems. Um, you also can get people to download a freebie to add in your website. Say you're a real estate agent. We have a lot of real estate agents with the Beverly Hills Chamber, right? You could get them to go to your website by offering to give them maybe what is the value of their house or offer, you know, the seller's guide to real estate during a pandemic, right? Or buyer's guide to buying during a pandemic. Here are the five steps that, or five things you must know, right? And then they, you, you're teasing them to go to your website and guess what you get when they go to their website, their email. And that should be your goal, not just on Instagram, but on any social media platform. Because at any time, for any reason, Instagram can shut you down, right? Or somebody could try to hack into your account. So you always, at least once a week, should have a call to action to join your email list. Why? So that you can own that. You want to own your real estate. You don't want to lease. And when you're on Instagram and you're leaving those hot leads on Instagram, you're leasing. 
you want to own. How do you own? You get those emails, right? And you get them to join your newsletter list. And somebody are like, emails? You mean Gmail? You mean Yahoo? You mean Hotmail? You mean AOL? You're still using AOL. <laughs> Some of you are. No, it's okay. Um, when I say email list, I mean like MailChimp, Constant Contact, ConvertKit. Many of you wouldn't have known about this webinar unless you were on the Beverly Hills Chambers email list. Almost all of the clients that come to us are through the South Bay Small Business Development Center email list. Yes, we do social media, but it's always to drive traffic to that email list because that's how we're going to convert. Does that make sense? Okay. So I just wanted you to know that because without understanding your goals, why are you going to do it? It's like you need to know the playbook before you play the game. And the game of Instagram is getting traffic on your email list. So how do you set up a profile? This is Koya Webb. She was my beach volleyball friend and neighbor who's almost to 1 million. That's why I'm using her as an example, right? So the first thing that you want to do if you want to have a checklist by the way, you're going to get this webinar, so don't worry about taking copious notes. We're going to send you the webinar, not just the PowerPoint, the whole webinar. Cool, right? I did start the recording, didn't I? Yes. Okay. So you're going to set up your Instagram as a business account. Why are you going to do it as a business account? Because they will give you insights. When I say they, Instagram will give you insights to what are the posts people engage with the most because in social media it's all about engagement the more engagement you have the higher ranking instagram will give you which means the more they will show your profile think of it like a television show if your television show is the hit show it gets a lot of viewers they'll put you at the thursday eight o'clock slot so you want to have engagement and how are you going to get engagement? You're going to look at the insights. I never did this when I first started. And now I learned. Is I looked at the insights and I saw what people liked. I used to do this motivational Monday tip. And, you know, it's cute. It's nice. But what people really engaged with wasn't the tip. It was the one-minute video. And, yes, it's a little bit more work. But if that's what's going to convert people, to go from likes to customers, it's worth it for me to take one minute out of my time to do a video. They rather have a video because they want real life inspiration, transformation advice. Does that make sense? That's for my people. Um, the other reason why you want to have a business account is because when you have a business account, you could connect it to Facebook business page. You're like, I thought you said Facebook was pay to play. It is. But what we're going to do, it's kind of like a uh, a hack. So what we're going to do, if you have a product, and I can help you with this, we're going to set up a product, products on your Facebook business page, and then you could connect that to your Instagram to sell right to your Instagram feed. And Instagram right now is not pay to play. So people can buy if you have a tangible product right from your feed. Super cool. Super cool. Okay. Some of you are so busy like not only busy with your business but you might have family at home husbands wives kids dogs people <laughs> that are that are just taking you know a lot of bandwidth so i want to make your life as easy as possible so one of the ways to make your life as easy as possible is to schedule your posts it's also going to help you stay consistent with your visual appearance because these apps that i'm recommending will show you the six squares before you post so that you can have a cohesive order. So it's not like picture, picture, picture. It's like picture, quote, video, picture, quote, video, picture, quote, video. It has some sort of a pattern that makes it visually appealing so that it's easier to what? Shop. You want to make it easy as possible to shop for your ideal target market, okay? So I just signed up for Plan That. Um, love it so much. I have it in here. And the reason I love it is because they give you ideas about what to post. And it's just so systematic. I know people that love Planoly. I know people that love Later. What I like to give you options. So you can look at all three of these. They're a low cost monthly fee to um, use it. When I say low cost, I think like 10 or $12 a month. Um, but they will schedule posts and also stories. 
So I want to say something to you about posts and stories. So posts are the feed, the six squares. Stories live in the circle. They only last for 24 hours. However, I'm gonna give you a hack in this presentation that you're gonna keep them beyond the 24 hours, ooh la la, because say you get rave reviews or testimonials, you're the Beverly Hills Chamber. You don't want those to be erased in the story. You want to save them. So you might make a highlight. I'm gonna talk about what highlights are, which are your menu bar on your Instagram, and then they will last forever. I'm gonna show you how to do that on another PowerPoint slide, okay? So you want to, number three, step three, these are your steps. Number one, make sure your Instagram is a business account. If it's a, if it's a personal account, you could convert it to a business account. Um, I still recommend, and this isn't just me recommending, this is all of the 20 million Instagram workshops I went to. Never trust a social media goddess without goddesses that she follows. So I follow a lot of experts um, in Instagram and what they all say in agreement is that pictures will invite people more than logos. So some of you, you're Tiffany's of Beverly Hills, you wanna use your logo, go ahead. I'm not saying, because you are you have that brand recognition of your logo, but most of us do not have the brand recognition of our logo, and it's more appealing to have a person. You will definitely get more followers, engagement, and interaction when it is a picture of a person. So you can have a high quality headshot. I vote Nicholas. <laughs> Nicholas, your picture. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, the Beverly Hills logo is fine. So how to set up your profile. So number four, what you wanna do is you wanna, buy, you wanna write a compelling bio and description. It needs to have the keywords. For those of you that have taken other workshops with me, you always hear me talking about keywords. Why do I always talk about keywords? because it is search engine optimization. It's how you're able to be discovered, right? So this beautiful lady, who I don't know personally, is you know a doctor based in New York. If she would write her name, Dr. Sonia, unless people are her patients, they don't know her. And on Instagram, you don't wanna preach to the choir, your friends and family that will never buy from you. I'm sure you already know that. You want people that are your potential customers. And these people are looking for the pain or problem that they have. And if they have pain, they're gonna look up the word pain. And because hers is very specific pelvic pain dog, she's able to be found. That's why my handle, which is, this is the handle right here, is the social media goddess, because that's easy to remember. You might not even remember my name right now. Oh, it's on the screen, Deborah Darius, right? So you may remember it, but later you're like, who's that social media goddess? And then you'll be like, oh, that's her Instagram. I literally wanted to interview someone from my podcast, and I knew she was a financial gal, but I couldn't remember her name. And I ended up finding someone else whose Instagram was named the financial expert. And then the other girl that I wanted had her name, so I didn't find her. So think about that. I had so many one-on-one -on -one sessions with clients that are in pain over thinking about changing their handle. They're, they're like, no, but it's my brand and I need to brand my company. You could have your company right here, but if nobody discovers you, they will never see the name of your company. So I'm not saying you can't put your company name right in here. That's fine. But you want to draw traffic in with your handle. So like using something like the Instagram expert or the social media expert or the real, real estate Nilda or Beverly Hills real, realtor. Do you understand? If you use your handle as the words people are searching for, you become easier to find. Ooh la la. Right? Okay, cool. So this wonderful doctor, look at what she did with her profile. I love it. You only have 30 characters, so you can't write your whole LinkedIn summary of all of your accolades, you know what I mean? That's what LinkedIn is for. But you can write, you know, Beverly Hills based, you know, chiropractor. And then here you can put a logo of, oh, I do acupuncture, I do cupping, I do nutrition, I do blah, 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 right? And then you, of, you can have your website here, but I'm going to give you something that's even better than your website. You're like, say what? What's better than my website? I'll tell you, I'm gonna give you a, a system that's gonna allow you to have multiple links and it's free. 
um, and it's also going to brand your business and it's going to enable people to buy from you right away, to set up appointments with you if you want to do that, if you're like an insurance person or a financial advisor, it's going to let people follow you on YouTube or Facebook, increase your other platforms, your podcast, but wait, stay till the end of the presentation for that. So does this make sense? So one of your assignments, if you choose to accept it, mission possible, is to rewrite your description. Because, and you, I really encourage you to use these emojis and how you do them because it adds color and it makes it easy to read. Remember, Instagram is a visual platform. You want to be easy to read, easy to understand, easy to buy. Okay. So how do you do this? I would use Google Docs or if you have a notepad on your phone, Use a notepad on your phone. Oh no, I got my phone wet. Um, and then it allows you to easily press enter because if you do it right on Instagram, it won't allow you to press enter and it won't be as clean. So just do it on a notepad and then copy and paste it. Okay, I know it sounds basic, but it's very important. The other thing that's so important when you're setting up your profile is you want to have a call to action. So I said this before, I'm going to keep saying it again. You want to get them on your email list. Why? You want to send them offers, campaigns, specials. If you're the Beverly Hills Chamber of Commerce Instagram, you want people to sign up for the email list to know about all the great events, all the programming you have, the webinars, blah, blah, blah. Lunch and earns, lunch and learns, all that stuff, right? So that could be a call to action. See this woman? She's a financial consultant. When you go to her Instagram, it says, get, a free, get my free ebook, A Latina's Guide to Money. And so then people sign up and get on her email list, right? So those of you that don't have your email list set up, um, by the way, I recommend ConvertKit over MailChimp, over Constant Contact. If you're already using MailChimp, Constant Contact, you love it, keep it if you want. But um, ConvertKit does so much more and converts people, more sales. Okay, so the second thing, say you don't have the email set up and you're getting it set up. In the meantime, guess what you could say to people? DM me. That's your call to action. What does DM mean again? Direct message. Okay, so you could you, say you did an Instagram live, right? I teach another webinar on Instagram live. And, you know, you tell people, DM me if you have questions or suggestions on what you want to hear next. As soon as they DM you, guess what happens? You start the sales cycle because it takes online, especially 10 touches to make the sale right? So they see your product in the feed. Then they see your stories. They might read your highlights. Then they see you do an Instagram live. They see you do an IGTV, which is a long form video. Then they see another post. They see a story. Then they see a live. Then they DM you, ask you questions, and then they buy from you. Did you see that? <laughs> Okay, um, so that's how it happens. So Instagram, the reason why I love it is because it sells for me. I, I literally booked a client, you may have heard of them, the NASA Space Center in Houston, from them finding me from a hashtag that I used and seeing my feed, seeing my story, seeing my profile, knowing that I was gonna answer the pain or problem that they had. They were looking for a Latina speaker because they had a Latina, like a high school that was 99% Latina, young girls, and they wanted to bring me in. So they flew me in from LA to Houston for this gig because of finding me on Instagram, right? So you wanna always give people a compelling reason to visit your website. Don't say, go to my website, <laughs> or don't say, sign up for my newsletter. Nobody wants another email or newsletter. Nobody wants to go to your website. What they want is the solution to their pain or problem. So when you're writing your Instagram and you can apply the same tool to any social media, you wanna think not like you, the entrepreneur, the wonderful CEO of your business that you are. You wanna think like your customer. Literally imagine them in your mind. What are the pains and problems that they're going through? And imagine that you're talking to that one person. Really connect with that one person. Talk directly to them when you're writing your posts. And what I love about using Planoly, the scheduler, is it corrects my spelling, because I have Grammarly on my computer, corrects my grammar, and it allows me to type fast. Because if I'm gonna do a post on my phone, 
the fingers, my fingers are too fat, I like to type all the letters. But if I do it on the computer, I can really do it fast, okay? So um, another thing that you could say, this is a great Instagram. It, I think they have 1.3 million people. They sell clothes for South Florida women or women that wanna look like they're in South Florida. Hot, right? Um, so they have this thing called Shop the Gram, short for Instagram, and they have the item numbers. And when you're on their Instagram and you see the item numbers, it makes it easy to buy because you can see what the clothes will look like because instead of having models like this, they have them walking on video. So you can really see how the clothes will hang and how they'll look. And what they do on Instagram is they drive traffic to the website by saying, get the discount code, right? And they say things like, you always wanna be relevant with your messaging. They'll say things like, look good in your living room. <laughs> Why wait for um, the world to reopen before you start looking good in your kitchen, right? So I'm like, you know what, they have a point. Cause when you look good, you feel good. So, but I haven't bought anything during quarantine. Not close. Okay. So you could also have a call to action to enter a contest to win, it, win a giveaway. Uh, I saw, what's that gym that I'm not a member of anymore? Um, I don't want to say it because I don't know if they're a member of, of the chamber. But anyway, there was a really, really expensive gym. It was like $200 a month. And um, they were giving away a year membership. And they did a contest where you had to take a picture of yourself working out. You had to follow their profile, use a hashtag, and they would choose one winner. And what was that doing? That was giving them, the gym, user-generated content that they could reuse. And what was it giving you? It was giving you potentially to win. But most of you were not going to win and you're just promoting their gym. So it works out well. Another call to action, some of you are not using IGTV yet, and if you want to learn about it, I have another webinar on IGTV. It's essentially the YouTube of Instagram. So YouTube is a great app. I love it, but it takes a lot of search engine optimization to get it to grow. Um, so this is a way you can have long form videos, longer than one minute, three minutes, five minutes, 45 minutes, right on Instagram. So even if you don't have 10,000 people to swipe up, you could do a story and send people to your IGTV that could be like an infomercial. It could be a product demo or a service demo or an interview where somebody's interviewing you, the financial expert on, you know, what is the economy doing and when is the best time to invest in this or that or whatever you want to say. Cool? Okay. That was just setting up your profile. Oh my gosh. It's 55 minutes. That's okay. We're good. I'm just going slow. <laughs> you're like, you're going slow. <laughs> Is this slow? I'm from New York. Uh, I'm going a little slow for you. Okay. So your profile basically is your promise, right? Your profile is your promise. This is what you're saying you're going to offer people. Look at Koya has 990,000 followers. She was teaching yoga at Aloe Yoga in Beverly Hills. I don't know if she still is. She should become a chamber member. I'll tell her. Um, Meditation, yoga, breathwork, holistic, vegan author. Let your fears make you fierce. Guess what happened? Here's a case study of a small business just like us. Because of her Instagram followers that are real, you can tell they're real, um, which I never recommend buying them because you can see the engagement. Like she'll have a thousand people engaging with her. Um, but she got a book deal from Hay House, a huge book publisher. Um, she's also got a whole spread in Shape Magazine. So her Instagram opened up so many doors that were up until that point being closed because she was trying to be a model, but it was very difficult because she had an athletic build. And so having the Instagram allowed her to be an international speaker and to be an author now. So these are highlights. I'm going to talk to you about what are highlights later, okay? Okay. Okay, so what problem do you solve? In your, see, this is the handle, the social media goddess, at the social media goddess, if you wanna follow me. Um, so what, what your Instagram does is it explains to people what they can hire you for. So I'm a marketing strategist, I'm also a speaker, um, I have a podcast, and I do webinars. Basically, I'm an infopreneur, helping, and I could have written a paragraph, but it's more compelling to use these emojis where, you know, I help, you know, small businesses to monetize their magnificence, to get paid abundantly to do what they love. It's probably too long. So I just wrote this. Um, and also, 
I added this tab that says webinar. Since quarantine, all of my events got canceled. There are no live in-person events. So now people can find out about the webinars that I do right from my Instagram. And that's what's building my email list, right? Because once a month I do free webinars on the third Wednesday of the month and people can sign up for them. So that's pretty cool, right? Right from there. If I had a story, which I do, see how this is red? That's showing I had a story. If I have a IG Live, which I did a couple days ago, it would be flashing. And then you could press it. And for 24 hours, you would have the ability to watch my live stream. Okay. But there are ways. Um, Instagram Live now lets you save it to your phone. Before it didn't. That's why I only did Facebook Live. But now it does. So it makes it a great incentive because people will get to know you like you trust you. I had a client that owned a gym, another client that owned a gym, um, and she's in Long Beach. And what she did was an Instagram live talking about how she gained weight during the quarantine and like, you know, that she was human, but this is how she already lost the 10 pounds by doing this, by doing that. And because she was so authentic, she was so vulnerable, she was talking about the pains and problems that her target market had, guess what happened? She got private clients right from her Instagram live because people get to like and trust you much more when you're real and authentic from a live. The feed is cool, but what's really going to get you even more business is stories and live. So those of you that resist that, don't resist it. It's really not about them looking at you, but you serving them you solving their problem, okay? So how to set up highlights, what the heck are highlights? Some of you are like, hi, hi what? Highlights, okay? So here's highlights. This is our chamber member, Sheila Nazarian, Dr. Sheila Nazarian. So this is, by the way, I was looking at her, her highlights and I'm like, she sells the Mia, those brushes to clean your face and get your makeup off so you have a better, I'm gonna buy it, she has 40% off. So just going through her highlights, I saw 40% off and I'm like, okay, anytime there's that irresistible offer and these highlights, do you see how she has these beautiful covers? I'm gonna teach you how to make the covers. You can have beautiful covers too. It's not gonna cost you a dime. It's gonna be so easy. So these highlights, are essentially your menu bar. You know when you have a website, you have a menu bar, it's about services, contact us, testimonials, whatever your fifth one is, right? Products. So this basically are the things that you sell, or you could also have a highlight that is about, like about you, so they get to know you if you want them to know you. Um, you can also in your highlights have frequently asked questions, which is awesome. You can also have um, rave reviews or testimonials. So um, I was teaching an Instagram story class the other day and people were doing stories of the webinar and I put them in the highlight that says rave reviews. Pretty cool. Okay, so here's how you can make highlights the easy breezy way. You go to, can you see it here, canva.com. It's like graphic design for anybody. It's not as complicated as Photoshop. And what you do is you search Instagram story highlight cover. Here's the issue. If you already have highlights, you're going to need to delete them and start over or save them to your phone and then delete them because these need to be the first one that you post. And how do you post them? When you add a highlight to your story, you could just press the little star button and then it saves it as a highlight. And then you label it, FAQ, about. By the way, if this seems daunting, not to worry, I have done this for several small business owners. So if you don't have time to do this, I can do it with you, for you, when you make an appointment through the Beverly Hills Chamber SBDC. Um, I can help you with this, but it's really easy. So how to organically get followers. This is so important. So one of the things that you can do on Instagram is you can search hashtags. So like if you do skincare, you could go to Instagram. There is a little home button on the bottom, and then there's a magnifying glass. See the magnifying glass or magnifying right there? So you click on the magnifying little button and you click the search bar. And when I go to the search bar, I could click 
hashtag, right? And then I type Beverly Hills, maybe realtor, right? And I could see who comes up the top five. And I could look to see what their profiles are. And I can also see how they're getting engagement. Oh, they're using this hashtag. Oh, they're doing IGTV videos. Oh, they're tagging City of Beverly Hills and the Beverly Hills Chamber or whatever. What are they doing? I always say success leaves clues. So how you can organically get followers is seeing who in Instagram that is in your industry, what are they doing? How are they doing it? And how can you do it even better? One of the things that a lot of people do, this is like a technique to grow followers organically, is you can follow other people's followers. Like I have someone that is a competitor with me for keynote speaking. Um, I recently won her out, but it's rare because she used to be the president of Telemundo, right? She's got a lot of visibility, a lot of contacts. Coca-Cola was sponsoring her. Anyway, I saw that she's doing webinars on PPP. I'm like, oh, I can do webinars on PPP, you know, and interview someone that's a PPP expert from SBD. You know, just give me ideas, right? But it also let me see what was her strategy. What is she doing well? What is she not doing well? And I started following some of her followers because people that like her would also like me and be potential clients. Some of you are like, I don't got time for that. I know, I can read your mind. You're like, I don't have time to sit on my phone and follow other people's followers. Well, number one, there's an app that can help you do it, the followers app. However, Instagram keeps shutting down these apps because Instagram doesn't want you to do this technique. Instagram wants you to naturally attract people by having great content, by solving the pain and problem that they have. So they don't like that you do that. So this followers app works sometimes and then sometimes it doesn't. Um, and it's a free app and then you could purchase certain add-ons like for $2.99, $2.99, but you don't have to. Um, you could also hire a virtual assistant. I know people that do this, um, a VA, and they can do it for you. You could tell them, okay, follow these five accounts um, and follow their followers and put like a little emoji or a little comment. There used to be businesses that would computerize this called bots, but Instagram does not like it, shut them down. So you need to actually do it naturally, but it's not a good use of your time and energy to do that. So you could find somebody for $5 an hour on Fiverr and really build up your account with key followers that could be potential clients or customers. Or you could ask for a referral in an entrepreneurial group. Say you're in the Beverly Hills Chamber of Commerce, you could ask other people at the networking mixer, does anybody know a good virtual assistant for a low cost, right? Online jobs that PH um, are people in the Philippines, Fiverr is international, Elance is international. Okay, so you also wanna engage, when you follow these people, these people that are following your competitors, you also wanna engage with them. So you would say something about their post, nice post, it doesn't have to be long, maybe put a couple emojis. Um, if you don't wanna do any of that, it's just too much for you, that's fine, you don't have to. Just create excellent content. What is excellent content? Content that solves the pain or problem that your ideal target market has. So if you're a financial expert, maybe you're giving, like um, I'm gonna show you an account, she's a financial expert. So once a week, she does an Instagram Live where she teaches a financial education class about how to save, how to pay off your debt, how to work with credit or like all this stuff, right? So create excellent content that helps your ideal target market solve their problem. Um, that's the key. Um, when you solve the problem or pain that your ideal target market has, guess what? They're gonna find you, like NASA found me, right? So how to turn your followers into sales? Like I said, create awesome content that solves their problem, but let's focus, and I said this before, I'm gonna say it again on three content areas. So say you were gonna post three times a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is always better than Monday or Friday. However, um, the apps that I recommended to you, plan that, planally, um, later, they'll tell you when to post. Like mine was saying noon was a good time to post, probably because that's when people have their lunch break. And they said Sunday was also a good time to post for my people. Um, so for everybody, it's different because my people, 
uh, my followers are different than your followers. So basically what those apps do is they aggregate the data and they find out when people are on and that's when they tell you when to post. Because it's not just having good content, but it's posting it when your people are on. Instagram, okay? Because you could have good content all day long, but if you're posting at five in the morning and your people are not even awake or they're cooking breakfast for their kids, then it doesn't matter, right? Okay, so you want to focus on these three content categories, educating people on the product or service. This works for both products and services. Awareness of your brand, how are you different, how are you unique, and also your CTAs. You always want to drive traffic to like, when you look at my Instagram, it's driving traffic to get the free webinar. What is that doing? It's getting people on my email list. Then when I email them out, they like the free webinar. Maybe they want a paid webinar. Maybe they want some coaching. Maybe they want a program, right? So it upsells them into my funnel. We all can have a funnel that does that. So how can you use multiple links? So one of the things I said I was going to help you with multiple links, what are multiple links? Why do you want them? There's a couple platforms I recommend, linktr.ee.com or lnk.bio. And what it does is it expands, uh oh, hold on. Um, it expands your bio. So instead of just sending them right to your website, because oftentimes when they go to your website, if there's too much going on, right? So they don't know what to do. You want people to be able to take action. So one of the things that Eva Macias, the financial services girl, right away when she, use, she uses lnk.bio, you put that link, you customize it, like she customized this. This is a link that's on her Instagram. Go to Eva Macias, not now, but later. You could see it, what she's doing. And then right away, she says free ebook. Why? That's her lead generator. She wants people to get on her email list, right? Then here's an event, here's a boot camp, here's book an appointment, right? Servicios en español también. Also services in Spanish, that's cool, right? So, but all of this is getting people into your, especially if you have a service, people aren't just gonna buy right off the bat from you. They really need to get to like, trust, and respect you. For products, it's easier to sell you know, right off Instagram because they don't, you know, have to get to trust you. It's not like they're investing hundreds of thousands of dollars of finances, right? They're buying a skincare item for like a hundred bucks, right? It's a different investment. So this helps people to get to know your product because it's the try before you buy. They're trying out the ebook, seeing what, you know, having an appointment consultation, seeing what you're all about, getting to like and trust you, and then they purchase your services, okay? So one of the ways that you can create appealing content and have it consistent, remember I kept talking about visual content that's consistent, is using canva.com. So canva.com is for images, so pictures. Um, if you see my profile, all of those images I created on Canva. You could use it for GIFs because you wanna alternate content. You don't want picture, 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 or video, video, video. Um, so a GIF is an animated post. So I have a podcast and I use GIFs to make animated videos and I use and I post that on Instagram. If you want to make one minute videos, you can brand them and use them on Instagram or Facebook. You can use them everywhere. I highly recommend the InShot app. I think it's like $4.99, but it's so worth it. And then if you're going to do stories, which I highly recommend you doing stories, because remember, 500 million people are looking at stories on a daily basis, and they could be looking at yours, is using the Mojo app. Here's a tip. When you're doing stories, make sure you put at, um, for the location, Beverly Hills. Because if you want to target people in the Beverly Hills area, if people have the Instagram app and they're geotagging is on because when you get the app, you can enable location to be on while you're using app or all the time. It will recommend you, your story to them based on their interests. So if they like other content that's similar to yours, if you put that location in the app, it'll recommend potentially you. Okay, it's not guaranteed, but okay. So this is plan that. Remember I told you there's a scheduler, how to schedule your content. So look, 
it gives you ideas to plan your brand story. They have post ideas and then story ideas. And they have these color coded. And you don't have to do all of these categories. You could pick three, right? So you could do behind the scenes and stories, but then you could do education, a product, and then inspiration. Education, product, inspiration. Education, product, inspiration. And you literally drag and drop it into, uh, and it, you can do it on your computer or on an app, and then it makes sure that you're consistent with your visual image, that you're consistent with your theme, and that you're on brand. And you could schedule it all at once and then go back later and engage people with that. So plan that, really, really important, or really, really awesome tool to be able to use for both posts and stories. Okay. So there was a couple more things I wanted to say, and then I'm going to stop for questions. Um, Nick was asking me if I could share how to use Instagram if you have a restaurant and you wanted to do delivery posts or pickup posts. So here's an example from a restaurant of like what content to post. Uh, I live in Culver City, so Tito's Tacos, even though I don't like it. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, I don't really like it. Um, you know, they're starting... It, they're they're going to be opening in June, which is, by the way, coming up, I think, next week. I don't know. May seems like it took forever. Um, so we're back starting June 1st. Tito's will provide delivery via a private local service called the Street Smart Messengers Only. That means no apps like Postmates or DoorDash, which have been running up high percentage fees for restaurants, even as some worry that drivers are not following the health protocols. Tito's employees will also use no tamper packaging on all its deliveries and every driver is mandated to have a valid serve safe food handlers card. What's more, reps for the restaurant say that Tito's ownership is installing a pair of plasma iron currency sterilizers to help clean the cash on hand, which is helpful considering the restaurant didn't even take credit cards until 2018 and still deals mostly in bills. The restaurant will begin takeaway service the same day with social distancing measures in place. And then look what they did at over, 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 under, which maybe is a partner of theirs and at eater underscore LA, because that whenever you put an at in your um, post, it is like a tag. So these other um, Instagram profiles can repost and it gives you the opportunity to have more visibility. So they gave all the directions of how they're going to be doing delivery and a little bit on how they're going to be doing pickup. Do you see how they put their hashtag? I have a whole other webinar on hashtags, um, but you always want to have the hashtag, the name of your business, but also the hashtag of what you do. So if you do tacos, you know, Taco Tuesday or taco restaurant, right? So you always want to have that as a hashtag as well. So I want to show you another um, example of pickup. I actually will admit it. I'm a Starbucks addict. I had like 40 days clean and quarantine, no Starbucks. And now I've fallen off the wagon. And so I'm back ordering from Starbucks. And this is not their actual post. This is the post I wish they would have had. Um, what they did was they have this at Starbucks, but you don't know to order ahead until you get there, which is like after the fact. So if I was their social media goddess, which I'm not, I would write something like, you know, we're excited at Starbucks to reopen. Here's what we're, we're doing to allow ease and grace pickup and to keep you and our staff safe. Number one, social distancing. So they do have a post on the door, but you need to know on Instagram before you go, right? So that you could feel safe even going, that they have green tape, which lets people know what six feet is, because people do not know what six feet is. People think six inches is six feet. Sorry. <laughs> That's why I don't go out. I stay home. Okay. Number two, facial covering. No mask, no service. I, you know, that's not probably not what they would say. They would say, you know, we require all of our staff to wear masks. And we also require those of you picking up to also wear a mask, you know, so something a little nicer. Um, 
barista check-in, and then you can give directions. I'm just giving you examples of what you could do. Um, hand washing is required for all staff. We have ad, ad, um, enhanced cleaning measures. We've reduced our hours of operation, so we can take that extra time every day to clean. But here's, here's the issue that this particular establishment had. They did all of this stuff, but then they were gonna take my phone to, to you know process the order but they had no gloves on and i had gloves on so i'm like excuse me barista can you put on some gloves so then i'll give you my phone and then afterward i clean my phone so these are some examples of how you can use instagram like this could be your picture and this could be your post for um delivery and for pickup Okay, so I'm gonna give you some income producing activities to sum up all that I talked about. And then I'm going to stop and take questions for the rest, for our remaining amount of time. Okay, so number one, what I recommend that you do to go from likes to sales on Instagram is to set up your profile as a business account. You definitely wanna track your analytics and they don't call them analytics, they call them insights. And it looks like a little graph bar chart and you just click the graph bar chart. And if you don't know how to convert your, your Instagram account to a business account, here's what you do. Go to YouTube and say, how to convert my business account and it'll tell you. Um, so when I go to my Instagram business account, can you see where it says insights? Under edit profile, it says insights. If I click on insights, it will give me content, activity, and audience. See that? Contact, activity, and audience. And it will tell me which posts get the most engagement. And guess what I do as a strategic business owner? I create more content based on what they engage the most with. So I don't just do what I feel like or what's easy, uh, repost something or something that's like easy. I do something that gets engagement because again, it's not about followers, it's about potential customers, clients, ambassadors. The other thing that I recommend is that you, um, if you can, and it's appropriate with your business, put a headshot. If you're already using a logo, your logo has brand recognition, but you're always going to get more followers, particularly on Instagram, when you have a headshot. I also recommend that you write your compelling bio. Remember Pelvic Pain Doc? She could be your example, Pelvic Pain Doc. Um, she has some nice emojis. Hers is clean and clear. It's, you know, she says New York based. Anytime you could put the city or the location that you serve, it's really going to help in laser targeting, geo-targeting the people that you want from the areas that you want. I also recommend that you set up plan that. Um, or planally or later, whatever one you want to use to schedule your stories. I recommend two, maximum three posts per week in your feed, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, and then stories, you know, the recommended dose, I, I know some of you may not like this, is like three or four times a day, because that's what keeps you coming up in the feed. It's the stories, not the feed. Um, so stories are really, really important. Um, I have another webinar on stories and how to do them effectively. If you use Mojo, it will help you a lot because Mojo, it's an app. It, it will make your stories into video. It'll make them interactive. It'll make them pop. So you'll love that. You, if you don't want to do stories yet, you're not ready, don't feel pushed. Just consider it. Start watching your competition. See how they're using stories. Okay. Uh, Get a free Canva account so that you're going to be able to graphically design posts, stories, highlights on your color scheme with your font. You could create a color palette so you're consistent. The color palette should align with the color palette of your logo. That makes sense, right, for consistency. You also, another thing that I recommend you do is brainstorm some content ideas. Like you saw Dr. Sheila Nazarian at the Skin Spot. She did a quote. She did a product and then she did a video. Quote, product, video, quote, product, video. So you can come up with a calendar. And if you work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I can help you with that. I can create a content calendar for you. We can put it in your scheduler. Any of this stuff I can do for you. Um, if you have a one-on-one -on -one session with me, but like Blair said, you have to sign up through the chamber to be able to schedule that. And it's through Zoom. Um, oh, wait. 
The other thing that I recommend is create compelling CTA. So decide what are going to be my calls to action. Am I going to have them download my ebook? Am I going to have them watch my webinar? Am I going to have them join my VIP exclusive membership like Sephora does so that you can get emails with discounts and special samples? Um, and that will entice sales, right? And then the other thing that I recommend is set up those multiple links so that people are going to be able to schedule appointments with you or get on your email list or follow you on YouTube, listen to your podcast, whatever you want them to do so that you ultimately get more sales. So you want to know what's next? So this is my income producing activity recommendation for you. Once you're done with that, don't get upset with me or nervous, but there's more. You don't have to do all this. Like I said, you could delegate this. However, um, I have another webinar that's just on hashtag follower strategy because hashtags and ads will really help you grow. I have another webinar on Instagram stories, a whole webinar just on how to do stories. I have another webinar on Instagram live with an actual talking points and a script. I have another webinar on how to do IGTV. And then as a bonus, I'm thinking if people want, I have a module that I can create on how to sell products right on your Instagram feed. So um, this five part series is being offered through the South Bay SBDC starting in July. However, if you wanted something sooner, um, I could talk to Nick and Blair to see if we could do something in June or something special just for the Beverly Hills Chamber of Commerce. I haven't even mentioned it to Blair and Nick, so surprise, I have more webinars, you know I do. Um, so this is the benefit of being a member of the Beverly Hills Chamber lots of content, okay? So if you wanted to schedule a one-on-one, -on -one, you could email um, Martha or like Blair said, I wanna follow Blair's lead, you can go into the chat, see this chat right here? And he gave a link to this, you just click on the link in the chat and you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me. Okay, so now's the time you've all been waiting for to answer your questions. Wow, I've worked up a sweat with all this information. So I have 15 minutes, 14 minutes and 47 seconds allocated. Ooh, I'm right on time um, to answer your question. So put your questions in the Q&A, not the chat, so that I'm gonna be able to systematically go through one by one and answer them. Okay, so we're gonna start with Q&A. Who's first? Hello. It's Milwaukee Fitness. Is that Anna? Hi, can you please talk about IG Live and how it looks in our feed now? Also, I see there's a group chat feature now. Yeah, those are, like I, like I said before, I have a complete separate 90-minute webinar on IG Live. <laughs> so it's like hard in a minute to talk about it. But basically, IG Live is Instagram's version of Facebook Live. So and it's very popular now since the pandemic began. Like I said, at least 500 million people are stories and people are watching live like TV, especially millennials. If anybody has the millennial as your target market. So IG Live, once you are done with it, you can save it to your camera and then you could repurpose it um, and you could upload it, Anna, to IGTV. Ooh, la, la. And when you upload it to IGTV, it'll show up in your feed with a little video. So then people will watch in your feed a minute and they can watch the rest of it on IGTV. Um, the group chat feature is really Instagram stole that from Facebook. Basically, Zuckerberg wants to disrupt every industry and take over. Like Instagram basically took over Snapchat and group chat, he wants to take over Zoom. So group chat is basically, you could do a video chat just like on Zoom with multiple people. So, but it's not really an Instagram group chat. They're redirecting you to Facebook. So you cannot do the group chat on Instagram without a Facebook account. And many, many people do not like Facebook if they don't have an account, so that won't work. Okay, so what are, oh, second question by Meraki Fitness. What are your current prefer, preferred appointment scheduling sites like Calendly? You know, I tried them all. I tried Calendly. I tried Acuity Scheduling. Personally, none of them work for me from my Google Calendar integration, but out of them all, Calendly I did like the best for sure. 
good question. Hi, Aska. What do what do I do if my handle name is already created for my business account and it's my first name and last name? No problem. Mine was too, and I just changed it. It's so easy to change. So, Aska, you just go to your account and you click Edit Profile, and then it will say um, it will give you. Oh, I have to turn this off airplane mode. It will give you the option to change it. So you go to edit profile and you change your username. You could do it right now and put the keywords. So you go to your edit profile, you click on username and you could change your handle today, this minute. Ooh, that's awesome. Okay, Nancy, when random creepy men are requesting to follow me, I delete the request. Should I allow it in order to accumulate more followers? No. Nancy, you're doing absolutely the right thing um, because our goal is not followers. Our goal is customers. Remember that because like you could be a woman and you could put, you could be selling bikinis, right? And a lot of guys could like sexy bikinis, but are the guys your customers? No, it's the women that are going to buy the bikinis unless the guys are buying bikinis for their girlfriends. So you don't want random creepy people. What you want is your target market. You want your ideal customer. And trust me, you will get followers, but you want the right followers that are going to be your customers, Nancy. Great question. And by the way, I don't accept people unless I think that they're going to be a potential client or customer. On, on Facebook, on Instagram, I'm open for all followers. Aska. Thanks, Deborah, about the handle name chain. Is there a benefit to keeping your actual name versus a business related name? Um, there to me, it's, there's not a benefit in keeping your actual name unless your name is internationally known on the microphone. If you're famous, then you definitely want to keep your name, but you're still going to have your name, Asuka, because if you look at my profile, it says the social media goddess as my username, but right underneath, it has Deborah Daris. So it's branding tissue to Kleenex, right? It's branding Deborah Daris to at the social media goddess, or right? So you're going to have the best of both worlds but marinate on it. You're welcome, Nancy. Any other questions? Make sure you type it in the Q&A. If not, it's been 90 minutes. I know you have lots of things to do. I appreciate your time and energy. Nick, do you have any announcements for us? I will make sure that you're unmuted. I think you covered everything for us. You mentioned the one-on-one -on -one consultations that are available, so please, uh, take advantage of that. It's a wonderful resource that we're able to offer with our partnership because uh, with the City of Beverly Hills. Deborah, thank you again for all the wonderful information. You are the best. So thank you for everything that you do for helping our community and all the businesses within it. My pleasure. And let me know if you want to do the whole series. We can roll it out. <laughs> and I, oh, you know, I will uh, put our calendar in the chat really quickly because we do just have so much going on. It's hard to list every single thing that we're doing, but um, I will list that on there. Yes. Wonderful. Awesome. So thank you. I know you have many choices of Instagram webinars. Thank you for flying with Deb. You're free to roam about the cabin. <laughs> if you would like to make a one-on-one -on -one session with me, make sure you get the information from the chat. I'm sure when you, when Nick um, emails you the video recording of this webinar, he will also have the information for signing up for a one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you so much. Bye.